Hi, welcome to today's video. This is gonna be all about heat changes in chemistry. So we're looking at this topic um, in relation to um, thermodynamics, so looking at thermochemical equations, looking at exo and endothermic reactions. So there's quite a few videos I've got around those. You might just wanna have a look at the uh, video which is around um, exo and endothermic reactions and enthalpy. But just gonna to introduce today just the concept of heat change. Okay, so in reactions, what we have often is bond breaking and bond making. Okay, now when a bond is broken, energy is taken into that reaction. Okay, when um, atoms come together to make new molecules or substances, they give out energy. Okay, so there is an energy change inside a reaction. Okay, and quite often that energy is in the form of heat. So we're going to be specifically looking in this one, doing some calculations involving what's called enthalpy of solution. Now enthalpy of solution is when you take a solid, so it might um, be something like sodium hydroxide. Okay, so we take a solid and we dissolve it in some water. So it's just plus AQ to show we're dissolving it in water. Now what actually happens is that the sodium ions and the hydroxide ions actually separate out and they become what's called hydrated. So they're actually surrounded by water molecules. All right, and now there's some energy changes involved in this reaction. So when the sodium um, hydroxide is dissociated or breaks apart, energy is taken in. When the water molecules come and surround the sodium and the hydroxide ions in solution, energy is given out. Now, depending upon if whether the energy that is taken in is greater than or less than the energy that is given out, will determine if the reaction is either endothermic, where overall and more energy is taken in, or exothermic, where energy goes out. Okay, so as I said, that's covered in a lot of the other videos. That's just a very brief introduction. What I'm gonna do is purely focus on just using this equation. So we can calculate the amount of energy that is involved in a reaction, all right? Or I should say it could be heat as well. So heat in the form of energy, kind of interchangeable here, by using this simple formula. This value here, Q, that is used to represent the heat change or the energy change in the reaction. And what we use is M. Now M is for mass, but generally for these reactions, because we're dissolving it in water, we're assuming that the density is one gram per, uh, sorry, one milligram per milliliter. And so what we've got is we're assuming that the density is one. So the mass of the water is the same as the volume of the water, okay? So if we've got 200 milliliters of water, we're assuming that the mass is also 200 grams, all right? So that one gram per milliliter conversion that we've got. C is called the heat, uh, specific heat constant, all right? So for this, we're gonna use the specific heat capacity of water, which is 4.18. So what that says is that it takes 4.18 joules of energy to raise one mil of water by one degree. And that's a constant. So we can use the fact that 4.18 joules puts into heat one mil or one gram of water by one degree, we can calculate the energy involved, okay? And then delta T is just the heat change. The, the delta, the triangle, just means change in. So it's the difference between the initial and the final temperature, okay? So we can use this to calculate energy changes or heat changes in reactions. So I'm gonna do one here for this reaction with the sodium hydroxide. Okay, if we've got some sodium hydroxide, okay, and we dissolve that in uh, three liters of water, okay, and we have a temperature change of 32 degrees Celsius, okay, so I don't know, we started at um, 18 degrees and we ended up at 50 degrees, um, all right, so that sort of temperature change, then we can calculate the energy that's involved or the heat change in this solution, okay. So Q is equal to, sorry, my pen is dying, so I'm gonna have to change this. The mass, which is three liters, so we're gonna change that to 3,000, okay? Because in this one here, volume must actually be in milliliters because we're assuming that it takes 4.18 joules to raise one mil by one degree. So we're changing our um, volume into milliliters. We times that by 4.18, which is the constant, and then we change it, times it by the temperature change, which is 32 degrees. So if we do this, we work out a value of 401,280. As I said, hopefully you can still see my pen here, guys. Sorry, I'll swap to a new one in a sec. All right, and the units for that is joules, because what we're doing is we are using 4.18 joules of energy to raise one mil by one degree. 
Now, because the temperature in this reaction went up, okay, it's what we call an exothermic reaction. Exothermic reaction is where the energy that is given out by these ions being um, surrounded or hydrated is greater than the energy taken in to break them apart. So for this one, we say that there was 401,280 joules of energy released, okay? And it was released in the form of heat. Indeed, if you take some sodium hydroxide and you dissolve it in water, you do feel, notice that that water actually gets hotter, okay? So that's the first one. I'm gonna show you one more. Okay, so I'm gonna show you one more. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to look at some uh, magnesium sulfate. Okay, so our magnesium sulfate, when it's solid, will dissolve in some water and we will get magnesium ions in solution plus we will get sulfate ions in solution and this green doesn't look much better sorry but i'll see if i can make it work to the end and then i'll get some new pens before the next video so in this reaction let's say for example that we have 250 mils of water this time all right 250 mils of water and our starting temperature was 18 degrees and it went down to 13 degrees Celsius. So this time, what it means is that the temperature has gone down, okay? So this is what we call an endothermic reaction. So energy is required in order to break apart the magnesium and the sulfate to dissociate this, okay? And so what that means is that the energy that goes into that comes from the surroundings, from the surrounding water that we put it in. And then the energy that's given out by these being hydrated or surrounded is less. And so overall, more energy is taken from the surroundings or from the water, which is why the water gets cooler, okay? So in order to calculate Q, okay, we need the mass, which is 250. We times it by our constant of 4.18, and we change it, uh, times it by our change in temperature, which is, in this case, five degrees. So if we put all that in together, we get a value of 5,225 joules. Now for this one, because the temperature went down, okay, energy is being absorbed. So in this case, we would say there was 5,225 joules absorbed. Whereas in the last one, it was released, okay? Because the temperature went up, so it heated up the water. In this one, temperature's gone down, so it's taking in energy from the water. All right, so that's a brief introduction to heat change. It's really good to get a handle on this because when you actually wanna do enthalpy calculations or calculating the delta H value, the top bit is actually the heat change or the energy change in the reaction. So it's really good to use that because all you do is take this value, divide it by a thousand times the number of moles, and um, that actually gives you the delta H value. So it's really quite useful to have that as well. All right, hope this has been fairly straightforward. As always, if you've got any questions, just ask. Thanks guys.